okay? Hi, Ashley, how are you? Hey, Thomas, how are you? Good, thanks. So I looked up a little bit about direct release before I get into the questions. Uh, the mission says that it's to improve the health and lives of people affected by poverty or emergency situations by mobilizing and providing essential medical resources needed for their care. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of charities that have big mission statements, and, you know, a lot of them out there are requesting big donations, especially around this time of year. How can people sort through all of them and make sure they're picking the, the good ones? Well, it's a good question. I think, you know, particularly this time of year when everyone's encouraged to, at a sentimental time, to think of others and make a gift, I think it's important for people who are in a position to make a charitable contribution to first figure out what they care about personally and then find an organization that is doing it well. I think thankfully there are groups like Charity Navigator that are independent kind of consumer reports type uh, regarding nonprofits explicitly and I think they do ratings and rankings and look at independently at groups financial reports, how transparent they are, how they're governed and assign a grade. So I think that's something that uh, even at Direct Relief, we, we happen to get good grades, but you know the Charity Navigator would be just as happy to give us a very low score too. So I think it's uh, something that is worth you know, anyone looking at when, before they consider making a gift, just to make sure, unless they know it or it's their kid's school or something like that, because of what you said, there's so much encouragement to, to do these things. It's important to know where your money's going, particularly when you can't you know, you're not the consumer of the service that you're essentially buying. Uh, it's important yeah. to have some validation of that. Yeah, and then so how are those charities rated, and what exactly do those ratings mean? The ratings tend to be on uh, the, it's not one-dimensional, but it really looks at the financial report. So it can tell, it's difficult to compare a, an, a, an animal welfare charity to an arts charity, to an AIDS advocacy charity, to an environmental charity. So. What can be compared is the, how the, the money is used and the quality of the reporting, how much is spent on things like fundraising of your dollar or general management. And so I think the charity rating organizations, and Charity Navigator is a good one, but Forbes magazine does this as well, um, what they can look at is how they're using the money and how they're governed and whether or not they're they're disclosing all the information that they're uh, at least required to disclose and then anything in, in addition to that. So um, so it will give you a good sense of how the money's being used, but not necessarily, it won't tell you this is the best environmental charity or an environmental charity is better than an animal welfare charity. It, won't, it can't do that. I think that's something that people have to make their own decision, uh, obviously, what they care about. Right, now that led into my next question a little bit. So people should definitely not make their giving decisions based, like only based on ratings, correct? I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, it, it really, at the end of the day, it's, it's your money, it's what you care about. I think certain people just want to make a contribution uh, to charity, and they want to find a good one and a highly rated one. And we certainly, I mean, Direct Relief receives good grades. So I think there's a portion of the contributions that we receive simply for being seen as a good charitable organization, which is great for us. But I think in general, uh, it doesn't make sense to make a decision exclusively on the basis of ratings. It's like buying a car or something. It's sort of like we, you have to like the car <laughs> or right. going to college. Uh, you know, it's a big decision about your life. So um, you want to take it under consideration, but not necessarily make it just on that basis alone, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now, um, we we're reading about some statistics about charities, and it kind of shows that public trust is down. It's about at an eight-year low. What could charities have done to really deserve this kind of cynicism, and how can they get back from public trust? Yeah, I think, you know, sadly, it, it, both nonprofit organizations are at probably uh, uh, an eight-year low, along with many other types of institutions as well. And I think, you know, when there's companies that do something controversial, and I think certainly coming out of the political season where there's a lot of negative advertising, you know, kind of demeaning about uh, opponents. Direct, re direct relief is not political, but we're sort of aware of uh, the environment that we operate in. I think the common thread is when there's uh, the skepticism or cynicism is just listen carefully to what's causing it. And for nonprofits, it's, it seems to be 
how the money was used. And so the best way to address that, I think, is just to be responsive and disclose more, try to explain more, and put the information that um, the absence of information kind of caused the cynicism. Um, so put out more information earlier and try to listen carefully to what the signal is coming from the public, which is they want to know more. They want to be engaged, but they want to be both inspired on the one hand and convinced that their money is going to do the right thing. And I think what, what we all can do as nonprofits is just not just the minimum level of reporting and not only the emotional stuff to inspire people to give, but also tell them the facts. Here's what we did and why and what your money was used for. And I think at Direct Relief we've seen that every time we disclose more information it seems to be positive. Um, so we're, we disclose far more than is required, and I think that's probably the trend where things are going. And I hope it will help, in general, improve the level of trust that uh, people have in nonprofit organizations. Yeah, that would be great. Now we have an entire website of our, um, or an, an entire part of our website dedicated to charity. So, kind of with that in mind, and with your mission statement in mind. How important are donations provided during next giving season to direct relief's ability to do its work? And do charities like direct relief get most of their funding from donations, or does any of it come from the government? Yeah, they, I think in, in the case of direct relief, we receive we rely entirely on charitable contributions. We don't receive any government funding. Uh, many organizations do, and that's that's great for them. We have found at direct relief that working internationally, for example, it gives us much more flexibility. To, to respond fast when there's um, we're using private funds. Now, with respect to um, how reliant uh, groups are on charitable contributions at year end, it's a huge percentage of all the charitable gifts that are made in the United States. You know, between 40 and as much as 50 percent between right about now in November, uh, sort of between Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve, because it's the end of the year, it's the giving season, it's the tax season. So groups uh, that like direct relief that rely exclusively on charitable, organ uh, charitable gifts, it's, it's really important and I think it's a time, kind of a nail biting time of year where people do what they can to be visible and encourage people to make a gift if they're able and then you kind of cross your fingers and hope it works out. So um, it's a great, wonderful time and it's also a, a white knuckled <laughs> nail biter time. You hope right. it works out. And then um, Direct Relief has a unique perspective of working with local nonprofit organizations in all 50 states and in 70 countries around the world. So if you were to donate to a nonprofit organization that wasn't with Direct Relief, how would you choose to do that? Well, I think I'd probably follow my own advice, the things that I care about personally. I have a couple of children with learning differences, um, one with autism. I think that's something that I, I care about, I'm involved with, and so I, I know a fine, some fine organizations in California that have provided services to, to my family. And I think that's important for me, but I think I also happen to know it's well run, it uses its money wisely, it's attached to a university. If I didn't, I would go on Charity Navigator, and there are many organizations and fine causes like Autism Speaks that, that do work in and around uh, different aspects of autism. But I think, uh, like anyone else, finding someone, something that I care about, and then finding an organization that will advance the cause, I think is the right way to go for, um, for all of us. I agree. And then where can our readers go to find out more information about Direct Relief? Well, I think our website, directrelief.org, has all the information uh, and then some that people can, can look at to see you know, what we do, where we work, how we use our funds, how much we appreciate the involvement as well as all of the, um, the many fine local organizations around the country. We work with thousands of locally run nonprofit health centers and clinics that do tremendous work in the United States, um, often under the radar without big advertising, serving people who are perhaps less fortunate and need help. And those are other groups that I support personally. I think I know the work that they do. And they're all listed on our website as well, along with a map that you can see every dollar, where it goes, and uh, around the world at Direct Relief, and we update that every five minutes. So I hope people can visit directrelief.org and make their own judgment.
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today, and thanks for everything that you do with Drug Relief. Thank you, Ashley. I very much appreciate the opportunity. Okay. You have a good day.